greetings to everyone who um, have joined us for this evening's call. My name is Oni Lade, your goddess guru, and this is the Oracle Speaks teleconference, August 2007, excuse me, I'm ready for August, I think, July 2017. Um, this evening, we're going to talk about living a goddess-centered life, and I have with us uh, someone who's near and dear to my heart. I basically could call her mama. Um, she's my guru, my teacher. Uh, she's just one of the queens of my heart and um, just an awesome, awesome um, person. Hold one second. Let me... Okay. So... I had to um, work on that mute situation. But um, I have with us this evening Ia Oshinike Anke of the Institute of Whole Life Healing. I will give some more information about her um, soon, but um, let me go on ahead and start us out with a meditation, um, prayer to get us all centered. Um, and let me start off also by saying thank you to everyone who's on the call. I appreciate you all so much, as usual, for taking time to join me for these calls. I had to take a little time off um, because I was studying to be a health coach, and so I am so happy to be back and will hopefully keep these calls going in a consistent manner. Um, I just have so many people that I want to bring on to talk to you all um, because this call is all about helping people to have wisdom and tools to help them better manage their lives, to help them to be happier. So if you would all um, just join with me in taking some deep um, breaths. Let's take a deep breath in and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Taking another deep breath in. Inhale. Giving yourself permission to be present in this moment. And exhale and to allow yourself to let go of your day, to let go of all the thoughts that distract us, that keep us almost held prisoner. Um, and to just know that this is a safe space for you to come and to receive something to edify your spirit, um, to bring inspiration to your soul, to your body, to your mind, to your emotions, um, and to inspire you to action. Okay, so let us say a quick, prayer, if we all would just open our hearts and our minds to our guide, to our ancestors, to the great divine consciousness known as God, the great mother, is however you understand the greater consciousness, open yourself to it, invite your spirits of light. Um, your guides into this space, this sacred circle. And so I just give thanks for this now moment. I give thanks for everyone who is on the call, who will listen to the call. May the only thing that happened be for our highest and greatest good, giving thanks that we are here at this moment to um, be at one with one another. It's, we live in a world where there's so much fighting and so much division, but we're here in this this space right now to be one with one another, to love one another. So we invite the energy of love. We invite the energy of harmony. We invite the energy of peace, of inspiration, of wisdom into this circle with us. We ask our ancestors of light to be here with us, the ancestors of the world who want to lead, guide, and direct us in a big way. 
to help us to overcome all the obstacles that we seem to face as a community. We call on you to be here with us and to touch us and to open our minds to receive whatever it is that we need to receive to move beyond the hurt, the pain, to bring ourselves in alignment with our destiny, to have good character. We give thanks, we give thanks, we give thanks. We ask for the energy of protection to surround us as you always do, but just to to protect us and be with us as as we um, unite here in this um, virtual temple. We give thanks for our our spirit guide and guru who's here with us this evening, Ia Oshinike. May you touch her spirit. May you bless her immensely. Continue to bless her immensely um, uh, as she speaks with us now and always. Um, if there's anything on anyone's heart that they are struggling with, I ask that you uh, please, energies of light, ancestors, angels, please touch the person. Show him or her what it is they need to do to tap into themselves and find that solution that's actually there. I'm asking for your blessings to rain down on everyone as well as their families. Again, may the only thing that happened in this phone call be for our highest and greatest good. We give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Again, thank you to everyone who is on the call. Um, if you are new to the call, my name is Omi Lade. Uh, I am priestess of the Sacred Feminine Mysteries as well as Ia Olorisha, um, initiated into the energy of Yemanja. I have um, the Goddess Guru videos that I make on my YouTube channel, um, and I host this phone call, and I'm just so excited to have you this evening. I want to start off by um, just kind of giving you something to think about over the next few weeks, something that's a little immediate um, is Mars and Leo. I've gotten into um, astrology here lately, and so I'm doing my best to keep up with the the bits and pieces of the forecast that I can keep up with um, to help you understand what's going on now so that you can maximize the energy. Because one of the things I know about tonight's topic when it comes to the goddess is living according to the cycle. And so one of the ways I have found to be instrumental and um, very effective in living according to the cycles is using astrology. And so right now, the, the big thing that I've been wanting to share with you all is about Mars and Leo. We're in the season of Leo. Happy birthday to all you Leos out there. Happy New Year to all you Leo risings, Leo moons. This is such an exciting time um, because Leo is all about inspiration. Um, it's about uh, leadership, and it's about confidence. Um, and so this is a time for everybody to be thinking about uh, what it is that you said at the beginning of the year that you wanted to work on. What are your long-term goals, your short-term goals? And to have that confidence and that courage that you need to act on them. Too many of us get distracted. Uh, we also get discouraged either by our own spirit or people on the outside of us. But we are in 2017, which is a fire year. And so this is a year that is about taking action. It's not enough, my friends, to just think about what we want, to dream about it. We have to do that and we have to take action. Um, And one of the things that I'm learning about is in astrology, Oftentimes, we are feeling and sensing what that pull is that we should be doing. And so um, that is what you want to focus on. If you don't know, you can figure out what is your ascendant or rising sign. Most of us know our sun sign and our moon sign. And you can go into a birth chart calculator to look at that. Um, And so if you know those, then you can kind of figure out what areas you are being called to work on, but if you don't know all of that, then you can feel what you're being pulled to. And oftentimes the places where you lack the, the, the confidence is what you need to be working on right now. Um, and so it, overall, though, we need to be having confidence, and we need to be looking at what inspires us, and we need to go for that, and we need to strategize. I relate Leo to the energy of Shango. Haru, which is the leader. 
And so we need to be good leaders of our lives. We need to take leadership on, on, on the goals that we have for our lives. And we need to strategize, and we need to follow that strategy. And with Mars being in Leo right now, Mars is about action. It's about taking off. It's about doing that thing, and it's about working hard. When we think about the energy of Ogun, in the Ifa tradition, Ogun works hard, and Ogun just sort of does it. But, you know, we got Leo going on, so we might have some pizzazz about it. But I'd rather just do it. If, 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 if I didn't have pizzazz, that's fine. I just want to get it done. But that's what 2017 is about right now. It's about taking action. It's about being a good leader. It's about being charged up and fired up. The last video I made, I talked about at the end of this year, if you don't get what you want and you didn't work for it, you cannot cry about it. And I don't like to be sounding like I'm being mean, but this is just this kind of energy. But we're being told. You know, the signs are there. This is a year of action. It is not too late. So with Leo and Mars working together right now, think about what you want. We just had that new moon in Leo. We will have another one in Leo, another new moon in Leo. And it, it, it will be at an eclipse, which I'll talk about eclipses in um, a week or so. But this is a time for us to be thinking about starting anew if we haven't. If we're doing what we said we want to do, then we want to, you know, really work with this energy to get ourselves supercharged towards our goals. And the best way to supercharge yourself is to take action. So this is the energy of Leo and Mars. Mars and Leo, excuse me. The last thing I want to share with you is a reading that I did with my Metuneta Oracle over the next few weeks is um, Geb. And Saturn. and so this is a time to, for us to work on our health and our finances. And basically what, what Sekert is saying is that we need some structure, we need some routines, we need a plan when it comes to our health and when it comes to our, um, our finances. Um, and so one of the things that's also important is that we get out into nature, walk in harmony with nature connect and commune more outside, get outside, connect with the earth, let the earth heal you. Um, but also, the gap was a negative, and so we really need to understand and look at those areas in our lives where we're slacking in our health or slacking in our finances. It could be that we need to develop an abundance consciousness also. And so through spirituality, um, through having a spiritual approach to our health and our finances with lots of structure and discipline, um, we will make gains to reverse anything that's negative that perhaps is going on. So like for me, right now I'm creating more structure by planning meals. You know, so in, in terms of planning, think about that when it comes to your health and your money, okay? Okay, so... I will go on ahead and start moving on um, so that we can hear mostly from Ia Oshinike this evening. Again, she is our guest. She's actually my first guest um, that I'm bringing on outside of Baba Omi Tosin and um, Priestess Erica. Um, Ia Oshinike is, like I said, she's my guru, my teacher, my godmother. She's with the Institute of Whole Life Healing. She is the chief priestess there, as well as a spiritual midwife, a healer. I see her as an advocate. She is an advocate for anybody who works with her. Um, she is a guru, a priestess of Oshun, and I consider her to be a once-in-a-lifetime teacher. And so she is here to um, talk to us about how to live a goddess, let life, I see her as the best person to um, talk to us about this evening um, because she does so much work with the goddess. Everything she does, as I see it, is goddess-led, though it's not to the exclusion of the masculine, but I love her work. She um, has she's, she's come here in part to help women heal, the, heal their wounds um, so that we can use our power to help heal the world 
in our own unique way. But she works with everybody, men, women, you know, everyone. She's a sexual healer, you know, when it comes to issues of sexuality. She is the person to work with um, any kind of sexual trauma, anything regarding that tantric type work is um, a good way to describe that kind of work that she does. Um, Also, again, I consider her to be the ultimate teacher of the goddess-led lifestyle. She has two initiations that she has given birth to, one of which I am um, the beneficiary of, the Sacred Feminine Mysteries initiation. Um, We initiate into the goddess tradition, um, as well as the spiritual aspirant initiation, which is also goddess-centered. It's really about helping women bring more structure in their spirituality and connecting to the goddess within themselves. Um, And so it's really um, very, very good to help women kind of get the tools they need to live that goddess-centered life that they want. Um, And she also, there's two things that I asked her to talk about today also. She um, leads what are called the um, Spiritual Igniter Weekends, which are healing intensives for women. Um, And I'm going to let her talk more about that, as well as the signature event for the Institute of Whole Life Healing, which is the Great Mother Celebration. And so um, if you all would join with me in welcoming Ia Oshinike uh, onto the call. Ia, can you hear me? I sure can hear you. (laughs) Ia, take it away. (laughs) Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, you. you got me so excited here. I'm about to shout. Wow. <laughs> this is good. This is good. This is good. Thank you for um, reminding me of <laughs> my work, my purpose, um, the things that, that keep me going, that give me joy, um, and definitely purpose in the world. Thank you so much. And, You're and most I welcome. Thank you. So, excited and proud of you for carrying this work on out in the world because that's what um, the Sacred Feminine Mystery priestesses are called to do, to carry on the work. So thank you so very much. And I'm so excited about all who are on the call. You know, um, it's interesting because as you were talking about you know, Mars and Leo and, and all the things that are going on. Um, I'm, I'm not one, even though I so believe and honor astrology um, as being a guidepost for our lives and, and to better understand the cycles of our life and that we are in. Um, but I, it's, it's one of those, um, areas that are still a little complicated for me. But what I was realizing as mm-hmm. you were talking about it and what I wanted to kind of segue into is that we as women representing this goddess energy, um, it's like the zodiac, which is a reflection of the universe, mm-hmm. is within each and every one of us, particularly as women, we are the ones who give birth to the universe and to the zodiac. So it was Mm. like, wow, this is so exciting. This is so exciting. Um, The different layers and, and levels of expression that we have, expression of the goddess, expression of the sacred feminine. So it's like no matter where you look, no matter what you're talking about, um, there it is. Yes. So I, I want to begin with a piece that you have heard before. And, um, and I'm, 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 I'm going to take the time to, to share it with you all um, kind of in its entirety because um, it's pretty awesome. And it's what inspires the work that I do in the world, in particular with women, and helping men to to honor the the feminine aspect within them, 
as well um, and honor um, us as women and, and the magic that, that we are bringing forth in the world. And it's a piece called Sister, Do You Know Who You Are? Mm. And the reason why I want to share that is because this is what was the question that was posed to me um, a good number of years ago now that so blew my mind as the goddess energy known as, from the Ifa Yoruba perspective, Oshun in the universe. And I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. But this energy of Oshun began to um, really lay it out for me in terms of, sister, do you know who you are? Mm. And, and, and the magnitude of that question and, and, and all of the information that was given was the impulse, even though I didn't know what the heck <laughs> she was talking about. Um, at the time, but the magnitude of that um, gave me the impulse to stop in my tracks and say, okay, okay, no, I don't know who I am, and I'm listening. And as I stopped and began to affirm that, it all started to be revealed. So, I begin with this question. As I was on my spiritual journey, doing what I thought was my my work in the world, um, and just starting to come into this energy of Oshun, um, moving into the to to the initiation into that energy, understanding more about. Um, this sacred feminine energy in the universe, the question was asked of me, do you know who you really are? Hmm. And are you willing to look beyond the veil of illusion into the portal of your own ancient wisdom to remember from whence you originated? I mean, you know, when we think about Um, when and where and how we originated, we usually think of that in terms of family line, Mm -hmm. our lineage, um, cultural, you know. um, That's that's what we sort of think about in terms of our origination, where we originated. Um, And then when we take it a little further, we think of our origination um, originating from God. Okay. Mm. So... She says, do you remember what your authentic cellular essence is made from? Huh? Do you remember how far back or forward the umbilical cord of your magnetic feminine soul reaches and stretches? Can you remember resting deep within the primordial fluid inside the cosmic womb of the great mother? Huh? I'm thinking to myself, where is this coming from? I, I realized I couldn't even have made this up, <laughs> this knowledge that was coming through. She says, do you really know what it means to be a woman, one who gives birth to all of humanity, all of humanity? <laughs> do you know what it means to be a feminine vessel, the sacred calabash that holds the feminine vibration of and for creation within the sanctity of your mysterious womb. Sister, it is you who is the alchemical container which holds the life-giving and sustaining nectar that nourished and gave birth to the creator we have come to know as God. Mm. Get out of here. So what she was explaining to me, what she was helping me to remember was that this sacred feminine vessel, goddess, 
is the womb that gives birth to what we have come to know as God. Mm -mm -mm. That sense of unmanifested consciousness that we can't taste, we can't feel, we can't see, we can't hear, we can't feel, that we give birth to that. And we give birth to universes, Mm. solar systems, stars, planets. That is the feminine Mm. known as the goddess. We are manifestors of creation, bringing forth light from the womb of our darkness. Now, that's some serious power. That is, yeah. That is some serious power. She goes on to say, do you remember who and what you were and where you were 10 billion trillion lifetimes ago, huh? What did you say? Do you remember your second dimensional self 45 million years ago as one of the aboriginal vibratory beings of molecular and atomic sound rays and bands of light that form the energetic grid spanning across the continents, linking the north and south poles to the Earth's axis, and anchored deep down within the womb of the Earth Mother's breath, still sustaining life for all living beings today? Or do you really believe you just showed up 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 years ago? Stop it. Stop it. This is what flipped the switch for me to understand that we women today are living, breathing, physical, formed universes. That's just to give you just a glimpse of the power that radiates from the goddess. Now, the unfortunate thing is that we've been so conditioned to follow a patriarchal world view mm-hmm. of a masculine god that it has caused our universe, our world, our planet, and the human inhabitants to be completely out of balance with our nature. Right. With our knowledge. Mm. With our power, our true power. We're totally out of balance with that because, and, you know, the because is a very, very, very long story um, for another time, or you can... Google it or whatever in terms of the myths, um, the, the, um, just the tragic belief systems being hoodwinked, bamboozled into forgetting who we truly are. Right. And when we understand this goddess which includes God-centered universe, then all of humanity lives in harmony. Mm -hmm. When we are in alignment with our core essence and core beingness, then and only then can we live a centered, which means a holistic, okay. whole, complete 
life and lifestyle. So this being birthed from the cosmic womb um, and all of creation, this awareness that we are the universe and the universe resides in us, is a huge undertaking in order for us to get back into the energy of what that means. Right. And so I like to think about that as, um, and, and some of you may have heard this before, um, you know, being birthed out of this triple darkness. Hmm. And the triple darkness, represents creation, sustaining creation, and transforming creation, which is about the cycle of life, birth, Mm -hmm. life, death, and rebirth. It happens in nature no matter what whether we're looking at it in terms of the seasons, whether we're looking at it in terms of day turning into night and then turning back into day, whether we're looking at it in terms of um, astrology, astronomy, um, there are cycles and seasons that are universe and universes are governed by. Mm. And it is so important, I believe, for all of us, and in particular women, who are a replica of this universe within us, for us to understand our goddess, cosmic, cyclical energy. As you heard Priestess Omilade um, talking about her experiences and her journey, her initiatory journeys, that she has been initiated into the energy of, in Ifa, the West African tradition out of Nigeria, what is called Yemoja. And when we study this energy, Yemoja represents the goddess of life, sustaining life, cultivating life. In other words, she represents that maternal nurturing energy of the triple goddess. Oshun, the goddess energy that I was initiated into, and who brought me home to remembering who I am, represents creation, birth, and and is that energy in the universe, that creation creatrix energy that brings together the polarities of yin and yang, feminine and masculine, for the purpose of creation. And then we have that transforming energy. And again, if we're looking at the tradition of Ifa, that goddess, triple goddess, is known as Oya, which represents closure, completion, or death physical death as well as non-physical death, meaning transformation. So there is this cycle of birth, life, death, and rebirth. These energies are also known in other traditions. In the Kemetic, Oshun is also known as Hetheru or Hathor. In the Christian tradition, it's not talked about much, but she's also known as Mary the Magdalene. 
In the Hindu tradition, Sarasvati, all of the different traditions, especially indigenous traditions, you will see the goddess all throughout. We have Yemoja, also known as Aset, also known as Lakshmi, Oya, also known as Sekhmet, also known as Kali. And the thing that these goddesses have in common, regardless of the tradition, is they represent the cycles of life. Hmm. So it is so important for us, whether it is through a formal initiation or just through our own recognition, getting still, um, whether it's through astrology, whether it's through um, um, spiritual readings to understand what your life's path is, your purpose for incarnating, the energy that governs your life. It is so important for us to understand what that predominant goddess energy is for us so that we can honor that about us and yeah. recognize that, oh, yes, I carry this energy of Oshun, Hevaru, Saraswati. Yes, I am a creator goddess. I love creation, creativity, manifesting things. That was one of the things that I realized about myself um, long before I was able to identify with Oshun that I was a manifesting diva. <laughs> My mantra was, and still is, expect miracles 101. Mm. If I can envision it, I can create it. Okay. And we're doing that all the time anyway, but being able to do that from a conscious place. Mm -hmm. And that Yemoja, Aset, Lakshmi energy. And this is just little snippets. I mean, you can take all of these goddesses and, and, and do a whole weekend um, of study just on, on understanding the depth of one of these energies. Right. But that Yemoja energy is about cultivating, nurturing, sustaining, carrying on life. That maternal, unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And the Oya, Sekhmet, Kali is about that transformative energy. That's the kind of goddess energy that knows when enough is enough. Been there, done that, time to move on. Let's go, people. Bringing that transformative energy. So it is so important for us to understand, first and foremost, that we are more than just who we see in the mirror. We are a mirror reflection of the universe. Mm. And our lives are spent oftentimes deliberately out of alignment, off track, so that what we are primarily focusing on is all of the trauma, problems, drama of everyday life and trying to maintain that. Mm -hmm. And we may look up into the sky and enjoy, um, you know, the sunshine. We may, um, when it's real hot, um, enjoy um, a nice breeze. We may enjoy looking out the window at a thunderstorm or even being in the thunderstorm and the rain. Mm. We may enjoy going to the beach and getting in the water and laying back on the sand. We may enjoy and spend a little bit of time 
in the woods or in the mountains, but rarely do we revel in the knowledge that all of that energy, all of those things, those elemental forces that we are seeing, that we are enjoying, are represented and anchored within us. Wow. And so when we can begin to move beyond just the seeing or experiencing a little bit of and begin to take in to our body, begin to awaken or I should say reawaken Mm -hmm. that knowledge and that wisdom within our own selves so that we can become the embodiment of the goddess, Mm -hmm. then we live in harmony with that. Wow. Every minute of every day. If you can can ever take um, a moment and look at a tree and the power of a tree, And think to yourself, dang, how old is that tree? Mm -hmm. How do those roots go? When you look at the ocean and how wide it is, how deep it is, when you look at the different phases of the moon and realize, that the same strength and energy fibers that make up that tree make up you. Mm. The same element that we call seawater is within you. Mm. Those different cycles of the moon is how your moon blood cycle reflects that. That's when we can begin to embody this goddess energy for real. Wow. Live in alignment and harmony with her. Mm. So that is just a snippet, um, and that is, that is my passion, that is my purpose, mm-hmm. that is my gift to support women and men in reconnecting to this reality. Yes. And so... I invite you to learn more about who you are. Um, If there's any way that I can be of support to you, um, Omilade can put you in touch with us. Um, One of the things that she said earlier in the call, which I think is, is so important, we didn't even touch on this, but working with our wounds as women so that we can be a healthy reflection of this cosmic womb that we are the embodiment of is so, so, so important. So a lot of the work that I also do with women is helping us to heal our wounds Mm -hmm. so that we can um, cleanse and purify our wounds from all of the trauma, the abuse from this lifetime, from our ancestral lineage, and from Mm -hmm. other lifetimes that we carry within our sacred womb so that we can ignite it and liberate ourselves 
and live from a place of wholeness. And those um, weekend retreats, as a matter of fact, we have one coming up um, the second mm-hmm. week of mm-hmm. August. Those weekend retreats are designed to support women in a sacred circle to go deep into our sacred sexual being and liberate that goddess yeah. from within. And Ia, yeah, so, I will be sure to include that information, uh, link to that information wonderful. Um, in the description. I will be posting this video on my YouTube channel, and so I'll make sure I include that uh, information so that they wonderful. have it. You said the second week in August? Yes. Okay. It is, um, I believe, the 11th through the 13th that weekend. Okay. okay. And I have to say, I have been with Ia for a long time before <laughs> before I went through the igniter weekend. And it was actually after my um, final rites initiating into um, the energy of Yamanya. And so, I mean, I, I was I, I was in a good spot, but... After I went through that igniter weekend, I literally felt like I had been birthed again, and literally I had initiated not long before that weekend. And I, I did not think I could be, be, be rebirthed again because I had already been rebirthed <laughs> twice. One weekend, <laughs> third rebirth, and I've not turned back since. So it's, um, it, it was one of the best things I've ever done in my whole entire life. I've never heard anyone say anything otherwise about those weekends. Ia, literally, our womb become ignited, and for me, my womb becoming ignited was my life became ignited. Yes. And it's yes. not like it fixed my problems magically, but I felt uh, ready to work with that triple aspect of the goddess that you have been talking about. I, I felt ready to utilize all three of those to, you know, create what I wanted, to nurture what I wanted, and to get rid of what I didn't need. Yes. Uh, and I think that for many women, people in general, half the battle is getting ignited to actually do the work that they need to do in their lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is um, – really a, a major challenge for many of us because we are so distracted by mm-hmm. just trying to get through life and stay on top of what we got to stay on top of that mm-hmm. um, that that beautiful spark of nature um, you know is is has has been reduced to you mm-hmm. know just a very tiny flame mm-hmm. um, and so yeah it needs to be ignited Yes. I did want to ask you a couple of questions, um, and then after that, yes. I, I, want, I, I would like for you to tell them about um, the Great Mother Celebration, because for me, that's another way to get ignited, especially within community when it comes to the goddesses. A lot of us don't have that. But yes. Um, yes. What, as I was listening to you, one of the things that I thought about is um, – and it's something that Baba G taught us. Baba G is he is um, just <laughs> absolutely wonderful, divine husband. I just love Baba G. Uh, he's me my too. godfather <laughs> and my guru. Also, what were you saying, Ia? I said me too. <laughs> right. Um, but Baba G um, taught us uh, four keys to self mastery. One of which is awareness. And it just sounds like that's what we are needing more of in terms of how do we connect with this energy of the goddess, especially the goddess within, is, is awareness. What, what would you say about that, Ia? Absolutely. Um, you know, a, awareness is the key because for so many of us, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of either numbed out um, or we're living these robotic lifestyles um, and so we, we have kind of become very distant from that sense of awareness, 
which takes us into a deeper sense of knowing. Mm. You know, it's, sometimes it can be so subtle being able to move into states of awareness. And for me, awareness is about um, moving into higher and deeper states of consciousness. Hmm. And that's, that's transcendental awareness and knowing where you move into these deeper, higher states of conscious awareness. Hmm. And the hmm. more we're able to do that, then the more things open up to us, you know, realms that we didn't even realize existed. Um, Mm. possibilities, opportunities, as we begin to shift our awareness from this dull robotic state of life that many of us are living into a more enlivened, um, fully invested, um, higher conscious, Mm -hmm. more evolved sense of who we are. Hmm. So I didn't know which question I wanted to ask next, so I'm just going to ask the one I think I should ask. That stems, you know, from what you're talking about, um, but also you had said this, we um, lives live, lived dis- deliberately distracted. That stood out for me. Why are we doing that, Ia? Well, you know, we're deliberately distracted because once we come into this world um, as newborns, as indigo children, crystal children, um, once we come into this world and we come in Um, with that sense of knowing, that sense of higher consciousness, we begin to take on a lot of the socialization, the, the cultural, tribal mentality of the world that then begins to dictate our lives, who we are, who we should be, what we should be doing, what's important, what's not important, all of the experiences that we have, especially the traumatic, negative experiences, we get bombarded with this. Mm-hmm. The, the, the powers that be that flood our minds with advertisement, mm-hmm. with all kinds of things, politics, all of these things are designed to distract us from our own power, our own truth, our own ability to manage, not manage, master Mm -hmm. our own lives. Yes. And it's very sad because this this is why it's so important for us um, as we're cleaning and cleansing and purifying our, our wounds as women, it's so important for us to do this um, and heal our own wounds as well as the wounds going back seven generations in our family mm-hmm. line and seven generations forward mm-hmm. because... We as women hold on to everything. Yes. Wow. We are containers, and we're holding on to this toxicity and then passing it on. Hmm. These are the kinds of distractions that we have been programmed to buy into, and to hold on to. True. But we don't have to. <laughs> we don't You're have right. to. We have the power to recreate our lives and be in alignment 
with our universal cosmic truth and knowing. You're right. It's yeah. right there. It's right there. So um, I know awareness, and, and, and so I'm going to say, but before you do this, I'm going to say one of the ways, because one of the reasons I asked you to come on and talk is so many people talk to say, I want to know more about the goddess. And sometimes it's difficult to fully explain because it's not like you were saying what we're so used to. Okay, this is the doctrine of the goddess tradition. There is no doctrine. It is your womb. Your womb gives you your doctrine, you know. Your destiny gives you your doctrine. We are the doctrine, I guess we could say. Yes. Um, And so, um, you know, I'm going to say that one of the things I always do is I say contact Ia for an igniter or the Great Mother Celebration as a way to make that connection because we've already said awareness is key. And so I'm going to ask you, after you maybe give one thing they could do today, if you could tell somebody who is just like, you know what, I want a deeper connection. I want to see if I can understand which aspect of the goddess do I carry the most or, you know, do I resonate with the most, at least at this juncture in my life. If there's one thing they could do today to make that connection, what would it be? And then the second thing is how can – just tell them about the Great Mother Celebration. I will tell you all, for me, that is the one time I can go and it's all about the Great Mother Goddess energy. And that's what everyone is there for, is to honor that energy. And it is um, a way to – do so that is, in my opinion, is important for me, deep and meaningful. I don't leave feeling like I did some frou-frou thing. I'm not disrespecting anything. I don't, I've never really been to anything else. But it's not frou-frou. It's deep, it's meaningful, and it is another way for you to make that connection. Um, but I want Ia to talk more about the Great Mother Celebration, um, you know, as she talks about one thing you can do. Yeah, they can do now. Well, well, one thing um, it's 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 an area that I think is is so important, and that is cultivating rituals mm. uh, and cultivating rituals that that are really earth based. And so, one of the things that I would strongly recommend. Um, and this is this is some of what we also, you know, um, guide women through during the igniter weekends mm-hmm. is to start reconnecting with your womb, mm-hmm. and you can do that. Um, I'm going to give you a a a breathing pattern that you can do. It's real simple. Um, because some of the breath patterns can get a little more complicated and take you on some phenomenal journeys. Mm -hmm. But just a breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, laying in a comfortable position, preferably with a light, uh, a, a candle burning, and placing your hands on your lower abdomen your womb area, and saying, I am open to receive and know the goddess within me. Mm. I'm telling you, and especially if you are doing that during the full moon cycle, Mm. You will begin to receive opportunities that show up in practical ways. I'm not just talking, you know, airy fairy kind of, you know, foo stuff, but whether it shows up in your inbox, whether you go into a bookstore and have a book fly off the shelf (laughs) in front of you, because that's how it started for me. Mm -hmm. 
whether, you know, um, you meet someone who tells you about someone who's doing some work that's goddess-related or whatever, it will start to come to you. Hmm. You will start to align yourself with your goddess energy and what the goddess wants you to know about you through Hmm. the engagement of your womb. Hmm. It is extremely powerful. Wow, thank you. Yes. Now, you know, you mentioned about the Great Mother Celebration, Mm -hmm. and um, the Great Mother Celebration is, is, as Omilade has, has said, that time of year when we all come together in community, women and men, Mm -hmm. to honor this life force energy in the universe called the Great Mother. Um, For me, the Great Mother is that cosmic, universal, um, omniversal womb of consciousness that then gets expressed as that triple goddess, Mm -hmm. that triple goddess energy. Also, the masculine energies as well. But that's for another conversation. (laughs) So we have an opportunity to come together and bathe in in that spiritual energy and understanding while also utilizing that opportunity to re-educate ourselves based on various topics that can help us to continue to evolve and grow um, and bring a higher sense of consciousness to the earth, to humanity, so that we are able to sustain our lives, and, and from a place of honoring the sacred feminine as it is manifested in humanity as well as this earth plane that is responsible for our existence. And also, it's an opportunity to introduce those initiates who have completed the Sacred Feminine Mysteries initiation, passage into the Great Mother, to the community, um, like you, Omilade, and so many others, um, Mm -hmm. in terms of the work that you all will be doing as priestesses of the Sacred Feminine Mysteries. So, for instance, this Great Mother celebration, what we are going to be looking at is the evolution of sex, money, and God. Mm. And of course, I can't give it away, (laughs) but we're going to look at how all of that ties into the sacred feminine. Yes. And how to evolve those things in our lives um, and in the world. So it's, it's an opportunity to be in spiritual community to engage in ritual um, and to really take our our lives to the next octave. Yes. I always feel like I take my life to the next octave. I hadn't told you this, Ia, but I'll tell you this now. What, what was the theme of last year's um, celebration? Last year's celebration was mm-hmm. um, healing Rage, the rage that. Yes. Okay. So we broke into groups at one point, and we were broken into groups based on what we were most interested in and how to transform the rage to do something positive with it, because that was largely what we were looking at doing. And so I was in the group that was about um, indigenous people as well as. you know, healing Mother Earth from, you know, how she's being raped. And my group, we all committed to doing something to help the indigenous people. And the big thing at that point 
was the Standing Right Tribe in South Dakota, and so we were making yes. commitments to supporting them, but also doing things to help the earth. And so, you know, it, it hit me not too long ago. I was a part of a group that started a movement in my county, little bitty Rutherford County here in Tennessee, to stop a, a, a development from happening near the wetlands area. And wow. we organized, it was just like overnight, this lady who works at the local university, she put out a change.org petition. This petition took off like over a 1,000 signatures in a short period of time. And I started getting involved with this group because, and, and this is me feeling like I really need to study for this health, health coach exam, but I said, you know what, it is time for me <laughs> to commit because yeah. I did so at the Great Mother Celebration. Well, I, I love the earth, you know. And so yeah. we worked, we worked, we worked hard, and we stopped the sale from happening. Well, we stopped it from being rezoned so that the development could happen. That was the first thing that we did. And we are almost at the point where we have gotten convinced the city to buy this land so that we can turn it into a nature preserve increase ecotourism, and I just thought, I was so wowed when I thought about, my God, I was at the Great Mother Celebration making this commitment. I didn't do this with that commitment in mind. It didn't hit me until after I got going, and I was just Absolutely. so excited. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what I mean by, you know, when we make that connection and that commitment um, to step into that vibration, um, then it appears. People, yes. places appear so that we can not only become the embodiment of that energy, but then to be able to express that energy out in the world. Yes. What, what date is that, that Great Mother Celebration, Ian? Yeah. It is the 22nd through the 24th of September here in Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> it's always so lovely there. It's always so lovely. Well, I will make sure that I put that information in the description box also so that if people want to sign up, and just to let you all know, you know, registration is going on now, and the sooner you yes. register, the better. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And um, I just want to see, I'm going to change the way I have you all muted to see if any If anyone has any questions, you can press star six. Um, we'll take just a couple. Um, but, and then after you press star six, press one. That should um, put you into the queue to um, ask a question. And if I don't see any in the next few moments, then I'll just put everyone on mute and then you press star six. Because sometimes I get this question and answer thing mixed up, but uh, I do want to tell you, Ia, you, you know I adore listening to you. I always feel so ignited, <laughs> just so inspired um, listening to you and just your wisdom. It touches my life, and I appreciate you for coming on the call, sharing uh, the wisdom to help inspire and touch other people's lives, and it's just been an honor having you on the call this evening. Oh, wait a minute. This is my work. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Ia. You were muted. I, I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Ia. Oh, no, no, no. I was saying that this is absolutely my honor um, because this is, this is my work. So, um, you know, I, 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 as you know, I'm also working it, with a mission um, called One Million Wombs United. Oh, my goodness, how did I leave that out? Yes, Ian. Oh, uh, no problem. But the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, it is about reaching one million wombs, mm -hmm. which is that represents that critical mass mm -hmm. for world change, planetary yes. change. And so, you know, it is about one womb at a time helping mm -hmm. one woman at a time um, who can then help another, who can then help another, who can then help another, 
to mm-hmm. really ignite and step into our sacred feminine power and keep this goddess energy alive and vibrating and bringing about positive change in the world. Oh, that is, mm, yes, one million wounds united. You can um, look that up on, um, just Google it, you'll find it. Um, I have one question, Aya, hold one moment. Go ahead, Tracy. Hey. um, Hey. First of all, I have to say that this is right on time for what I'm about to um, do for the upcoming week. So this week, um, and it'll, I will start uh, tomorrow officially, um, is like doing a reset with my body and mind and spirit and things that um, I need to kind of, you know, do as far as like health-wise, but also um, spirit-wise and emotionally and things of that nature. So um one, I just wanted to say thank you for for having um, for this particular conference call because it's it really has um, it's really what I need right now to prepare me for what I'm going to be doing um, awesome. and some of the areas that I'm working on. And actually, um, I'm, I'm doing uh, the Woman Code book uh, that oh. you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, I've been reading that book and um and I'm doing that um uh, uh reset. You. That reset. Um and so I guess um some of the areas and then also like what's going on like with the zodiac, like my um moon sign is in Leo. And mm. so, you know, I have uh struggled with um knowing or remembering who I am as a, mm-hmm. a you know, um, as a divine being and as mm-hmm. having confidence in shoes and insecurities and things of that nature. So I guess, um, you know, my question, and I don't really quite know how to phrase it, but, you know, um, other than the breathing exercises, um, and meditation, what other things could I do to kind of help myself remember who and what I am? And and I'm also going back to your, um, uh, to your, um, the readings that you've done um, mm-hmm. for me as well on Milade. So um, that's part of my, my plan too, but you know, what kinds of things can I do to to help with that? Well, um, you go know, ahead, Ia. Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason why I, I mentioned about um, the breathing and starting with the womb um, is because so much of the knowledge of, of who we are is living there within us. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm a big one for ritual, um, but another very couple simple ones is also being able to be in nature, to commune and meditate in that space, so that we can begin to feel um, the energy of the elements and the environments, because that helps to strengthen that sense of awareness and awaken that within us. Um, Another thing is movement. And I'm a big one for sensual movement. Even though I love, you know, yoga and think that that is um, very, very, very important, if we are able to do sensual movement, um, and I'm going to tell you one of the things that happened for me many, many, many years ago when I was starting to re-honor um, my body and my feminine energy was that I began doing what I called um, sacred sensual movement 
huh. uh, honoring my body in the mirror naked. It began to reawaken parts of me that had been dormant for years. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you. Um, and it's interesting because it, it, that was a part of accepting myself as this goddess energy because mm-hmm. at that time, even though I was cool with my body, especially when I was, you know, dressed in hair looking good and makeup and all that stuff, and, you know, then we look in the mirror, but I had stretch marks on my hips um, from childbirth. And I hated those stretch marks. And so when I started doing this sensual movement in the mirror of honoring myself, looking at myself, saying that I am in gratitude for being this sacred feminine being, Mm. I'm going to tell you something. To this day, when I look at myself nude, I can't find my stretch marks. Mm. I can't find them. I can't find them. So I stopped looking. I can't find them. Mm. When I look at my body, what I see see is this holy temple that represents the goddess. And that's what I'm worshiping and honoring every day. And that's what then fuels what you're getting ready to do, Tracy. That Mm -hmm. fuels that I am going to eat well. I am going to rest well. I am going to make sure that I am doing right livelihood and work and honoring myself. All of that gets fueled and activated in a practical way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah. Okay, wow. last, last thing I want to say about that is also creating a sacred space in your home or in your bedroom that becomes an altar and being drawn to objects that you can place along with flowers, candles, um, um, sacred objects that you feel drawn to. You go into a store and something is calling you and saying, oh, heck no, you're not leaving without me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Being able to place those in that sacred space because that sacred space represents, mirrors to you, your own personal altar. So this is not something outside of you that you're worshiping. This is a reminder Mm -hmm. for you Mm -hmm. to sit and be in that sacred space and listen, and then you will see it manifesting. Mm-hmm. Wow. Thank you, Ia. Thank You're you. You're welcome. There you go, Tracy. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> um, I don't see any other questions, Ia, but something that people may be curious about um, is what what other type of work do you do with people? We've talked about the igniters. We've talked about the Great Mother Celebration. Um, and Ia's um, web address is many uh, paths, one, wait a minute, many, many paths, one truth. What is it? Ia, I'm sorry. Yeah. My is. Many paths. And there's an S on the end of that, many paths, um, one truth, and it's the, the numeral one. One, okay. Dot org. Many paths, one truth, dot org. Yes. So you can go and to Ia's website to, you know, connect more with her and know more about her. But I do just want you to mention, because I know you do other amazing work with people, Ia, just in case people are wondering. Well, yes. I do um, spiritual intuitive readings with people, um, giving them guidance on um, what I'm reading and sensing from their energy body. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I do weekend healing intensives where mm-hmm. you can come and have the whole weekend be designed for you um, mm-hmm. in terms of what it is that you are needing to um, heal, um, reconnect to, tap into, let go of, those kinds of things. Um, I work with clients um, one-on-one uh, doing healing sessions. Uh, I also work with women in particular doing sacred sexual healing, and mm-hmm. we do that in person as well as via Skype or phone. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the things um, awesome. that I offer. And E is the real deal. Um, I, I, I'm biased. I'm, I'm, I'm biased because uh, if it wasn't for the work that I've done with Ia, um, I believe that the mothers and the ancestors, my Ori, <laughs> you know, my higher God, would have found someone else. But um, I, it is hard for me to to really conceive of my life without Ia. That is the impact that Ia has made on me. So I just want to say that if you work with Ia, your life will become better. And it is because Ia is working with you to connect with the power within. She will tell you, it's, you know, it's not about Ia. It's about her work and what she will do to help you in your own life. So, um, you know, I'm just plugging Ia's work because it, it, is, it has helped me so much and so many people I know. And because Ia helped me, I'm able to do things like this call and divine for other people, you know, really utilize my Absolutely. gifts. So it just keeps Absolutely. flowing on and on. You just um, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. It's yes, indeed. Mama. <laughs> yes, indeed. Will do. Yes, indeed. I want to thank you again, Ia, for being on the call. Um, you've blessed us, and um, I'm just so appreciative. And hopefully we'll get you back uh, at another time to talk about, you know, an, another topic, or we could perhaps even set up a webinar to go a little deeper um, Love on this. Love to. All right. And, and to everyone on the call, thank you so much. We appreciate you for joining in. Um, again, I will upload um, the call to my YouTube channel. Um, just look up Goddess Guru, uh, Goddess Guru on YouTube, and you will find me. And um, I'll upload it there. Thank you all so much. And I will keep you posted on the next uh, teleconference, either via the Goddess Gathering or the Oracle Speaks on um, on Facebook. So thank you, everyone. Uh, wishing you a great you know, week and just many blessings of the goddess be upon you all. Thank you to all the energies that have surrounded us and for the good work that was done in this. And everyone have a great evening. Peace.